This is Daryl Goodman of Achievement Solutions, and welcome to Resolve Equipment Rental. Businesses that provide rental equipment and service have unique requirements that differ from those that focus solely on distribution and or retail. In addition to the need to manage the company's financials, purchasing, sales, and inventory, businesses like yours need an efficient and comprehensive tool allowing you to manage rental contracts, bill for both recurring and non-recurring rental revenue, and many will also require the ability to provide service to and for your rental fleet. However, it is important to consider that many rental businesses also sell consumables and may also operate complementary wholesale or retail operations. Resolve Equipment Rental seamlessly extends SAP Business One's robust ERP solution to embed these features into a single system that can manage your company's rental and other business needs. The rental process should follow a familiar process, similar to other sales within your organization. This provides for consistency and ease for your employees' use. We'll start with a quotation. A quotation allows us to provide our customer with a proposed list of equipment and the prices. We can specify an estimated rental start date and choose whether or not the rental agreement will be open-ended or defined for a specific period. If you know the period that the customer will return the equipment, you can specify a rental end date. Otherwise, you can leave it open to allow the contract to remain open for a long-term lease. Additionally, you can specify how you'd like to bill for this. Here you can see we have user configurable options. In this case, we have a four-week month, a 30-day month, or to be able to use the monthly anniversary date. In this case, it would bill on the second for each each month. As we go to select the items from our rental fleet that we would like to quote, you can see we have the ability to do both serialized or unmanaged products. In this case, we'll just select two different products. After selecting the products, if given, we can enter a quote quantity. And if we need to change, we have the ability to override the billing type at the line level as well. In addition to the rental product, we also have the ability to add a quote for any consumables that might be required. As you can see, the rent type here is a sell for the consumable item. When the customer accepts our quote and awards us an order, we have the ability to convert the quote to a sales order, at which point we can enter the customer's PO number and proceed with the order. Once the rental order is entered, you have the ability to review and make any changes that are required. One such example would be to change the type from rent to re-rent. Perhaps at the time that we quoted the material, we had sufficient quantity of the batteries to be able to provide for the rental. However, we subsequently run out or promise them to another customer. So we have the ability to change the rental type from rent to re-rent, which will allow us to rent them from another vendor and then re-rent them to our customer. In this case, we're going to rent them for a cost of $18 per every four weeks. And that will give us the ability to make a nice spread as we are going to charge our customer the $25. Once we've done so, it was system will allow us to generate a purchase order to the supplier, which will allow us to have a purchase order that includes the quantity that we need to receive and the ability to keep the PO open for an unlimited number of months while we continue to pay them against this purchase order. Once we receive the material from the suppliers, the system will automatically put these units on rent, including tracking any serial numbers, even though this material is not part of our fixed assets or part of our standard rental fleet. Back on the sales order, we may find that we want to look at the status of the rental items and exclude any of the consumable items. This can be done by going into the rental item details. The rental item details provides a summarized view showing only the rental items and allows us to see and maintain key fields related to the rental. We have the ability to see the rental quantity, the expected start date, how it's being built, and we can drill in to see the status of any of the items. In this case, both items have been put on rent and we can drill in to be able to see the supporting transaction details, including the serial numbers that were put on rent. Additionally, the rental item details screen allows us to see or maintain a service contract for this rental. A service contract exists within the service module of SAP Business One and is used to be able to provide information about what items will be covered and what agreements you have for your SLA. This complements the rest of the service module, including the ability to make service calls, all of which will be visible from your service contract. Here you can see our coverage is seven days a week from eight to five for parts only. I'm able to identify the specific items that are being covered. And here you can see the actual serial numbers that have been put on rent. For any serial number, I can drill in to open the equipment card, which will allow us to be able to see more information, such as where it's physically located, if there were any service call histories, as well as all the transactions that have occurred for this particular item. Rental automatically manages the customer equipment cards and will maintain the status as the material is moved on and off rent. In addition to the open quantity due to the customer and the rented quantity that we've already reviewed, you can see we also have the ability to see any quantity that has been exchanged or returned. 
An exchange allows us to handle any equipment that might be dead on arrival or otherwise fail and need service. It allows us to be able to do an advanced ship where you can replace the material in advance of receiving it back from your customer or to set up a document where the customer will return the product to us first, in which case we can then go ahead and replace them. Whereas the return quantity keeps track of the total number of units that have been returned in case you have a partial return against the open quantity. Let's see how we can create an exchange request in order to be able to facilitate the customers returning the product to us and requesting a replacement. Here you can see we have the ability to go into the rental exchange request. Here you can see where I'm able to enter the customer and then I'll be able to select from a list of the customer's open rental agreements. In addition to selecting, I can specify the quantity that I'd like to return and specify both the warehouse where the material will come back into and possibly a different warehouse from which the new material will ship. It does not need to be the original warehouse that provided the rental equipment when you started the order. We'll simply add the request and now we have a return document number that we can provide to the customer and or email them a copy of their return request. Another feature of working within the rental solution is the ability to use all of the warehouse management functionality that comes with SAP Business One. In this case, the rental exchange as an advanced shipment will allow us to create a pick list which will specify where in the warehouse we can find the material and we'll be able to process that later. An important aspect of using the rental solution inside SAP Business One is that you also have access to the full complement of warehouse management features. If we look at the pick list, you can see that the rental exchange request did already assign a warehouse location including a bin where we can find the product to ship the replacement. This allows for efficient inventory handling processes within the warehouse. Here we can see an example of what the warehouse user would see on their device that allows them to scan work within the warehouse. As you can see, they have menu options that allow them to be able to pick material that needs to go on rent, to accept material back in off rent, or to be able to process by serial number. Let's take a look at the rental pick list. Our warehouse user will get a list of all of the pick lists that are assigned to them, including the details. I'll select my pick list and it will direct me where in the warehouse to go, what item to pick, and the quantity that I need. I do have the information to get more details, including any specified comments or remarks, and I can actually pack while picking if I want to be able to make these products go onto multiple pallets or other types of packaging. I can then simply scan the bin that I, when I arrive to it and it will identify where I should put the product and allow me to be able to scan the product. Next, I'll be asked to confirm the quantity, and since this product is serialized, I'll be prompted to scan or select the serial numbers. In this case, I'll simply select some serial numbers. Notice as I do, the remaining quantity is updated, allowing me to keep track of how many that I need to proceed. Next, I'll be prompted to confirm the quantity or scan a serial number to add it. Notice how as I scan the product numbers, the remaining quantity is automatically updated, and as I enter my last serial number, I'll automatically be returned to the previous screen. My picked quantity is updated, and I can see that I've picked all items by using the hide finished box. This tells me that I've now grabbed all the material that's needed to process this order. Using the hide finished function, I'm able to see that I have no more items left to scan, and I've completed the pick for this rental order. However, I can uncheck the hide finish checkbox to be able to see that I did in fact pick three of the required units from the expected location in the warehouse. I can now simply finish my pick and I've completed my warehouse process as well as ensuring that the rental order is up to date. And since this pick was directly part of the rental process, I've also completed the warehouse process and ensured that the rental order is up to date with the correct quantity. Similar to an exchange request, we may require our customers to advise us in advance when they want to return material. This will allow us to create a rental return request, which also allows us to specify the rental order and material that we expect to come back. This document can also be shared similar to an RMA to provide documentation for the customer to ship material back or for your logistics department to schedule a pickup. In much the same way that we put the material on rent, we have the ability in the warehouse to take the material off rent by seeing the expected rental returns, selecting the document, and confirming the material that was received. Here I can scan the bin which I want to receive the rental return into, which could be a receiving bin or using optional quality control processes could have gone into a quality bin to be inspected for further processing. I can enter or scan the quantities in. In this case, I'm going to receive in three and I'll be prompted to select the serial numbers which I want to return. Here I'll be shown a list of the serial numbers that were put on rent and I can simply scan or select them. As before, I get a counter and again, as I scan the last serial number, I'll be returned automatically to the previous screen. I can see that I received all of the quantity that I need, and I can finish to take the material off rent. Now that we've seen the rental process in action, let's take a step back to see how some of the setups impact the rental process. First, let's look at those billing cycles. 
As you may recall, I mentioned the billing cycles were user-defined. This allows you to set up as many rules as needed to serve your customers. Here you can see this particular one is set up to bill every 28 days. We have the ability to bill at the beginning or the end of the period, as well as the ability to specify the valid rate structures within this period. Every four weeks will be considered a month and will bill at the monthly rate. However, we do have the ability to do proration at both the week and the day level for returns that do not use the entire 28-day period. The calculation of how to handle an early return is also user-defined, where you can specify each day within the period and how many of each rate you'd want to return. Thus, you can see if a customer returns something four days into a rental period, they'll be charged four times daily rate, whereas if they return it 20 days in, they'll be charged two weeks plus six days. Note that this is completely customizable. So if you have a scenario where once the customer has reached a certain number of days, they should be charged the full month, say perhaps at day 24, you'd simply be able to change this to have one month billing with no week or day sub, period, sub billing. The service scheduler enables equipment rental to automate the process of creating your recurring billing. This can be fully automated so that no user intervention is required. And so for instance, you can see here, the system is set to bill at 6 a.m. every day for any rental agreement that requires invoicing. Note that you can have different schedules for different customer classes or billing cycle types. In addition to or in place of the automated billing, you also have the ability to process a manual billing. The manual billing screen allows us to specify any criteria, such as a cutoff date that we want to bill through, and gives us the ability to specify filters. We are then presented with a list of documents that require invoice processing, and we can select them to be able to create a draft, allowing us to preview or select or modify any data before billing occurs. Here in the rental returns, we can see and manage all of the returns that were processed by the warehouse. This screen gives us the ability to confirm a return, and if necessary, to be able to adjust the off-rent date. This, would, <clears throat> this, enables, this enables authorized users to be able to change the date of the return to a future date if a minimum rental date has not been met, or to a future date if the minimum term has not been met, or to a previous date if, for example, our agreement is to take the equipment off rent on the date that it was shipped from the customer, even though we have not yet received it back at our warehouse. After confirming the data, you simply select the documents to process and it will generate a final bill. Note that this entire step is optional and can be automated so you don't need to confirm your returns. A good way to get visibility into everything rental is to use the Resolve OTC. And within the item inquiry, you'll see that along with all of the other areas of SAP Business One, there's an equipment rental tab. The equipment rental tab has all of the orders, quotes, deliveries, and more specifically for the rental orders. And here we're taking a look at open rental orders. And these show all of the item details and the customers that we need to uh, deliver to. So you can see the delivery date, the items, uh, and also we also have the ability to schedule uh, the due dates for when they come back, as well as being able to set up a rental return request, which acts like an RMA that we can actually send to the customer to ask them to, to return the products to us. And so this gives us the ability to schedule the date that it comes back. We can also use this to set up transportation, whether it's a parcel shipment or pick it up by a van. Another great place to be able to see your rental status is within the mobile. And in the mobile, you'll see there's an equipment menu, equipment rental menu that gives us the opportunity to process. We can actually do a, uh, a an actual pick to put the demo equipment on rent. Uh, to be able to accept the return, uh, including being able to process it by serial number. And when we want to get an overview, you'll be able to go into the rental calendar. The rental calendar gives us the ability to search by item or by item group, where we can see multiple products together. Here, when we display, we can choose whether or not we want to see on a weekly, daily, or monthly basis. And we're able to see both the quantity that's available, and we're able to see both the quantity that's available in stock, ready to be given as a rental, as well as the quantity of items that are coming back and expected to come back in that day. Here you can see the detail where we can see all of the transactions. We can see all of the items that need to be returned and get a running total over the course of the different dates. A good way to get visibility into everything rental is to use the Resolve OTC. And within the item inquiry, you'll see that along with all of the other areas of SAP Business One, there's an equipment rental tab. The equipment rental tab has all of the orders, quotes, deliveries and more specifically for the rental orders. And here we're taking a look at open rental orders and these show all of the item details and the customers that we need to uh, deliver to. So you can see the delivery date, the items, uh, and also we also have the ability to schedule uh, the due dates for when they come back, 
as well as being able to set up a rental return request, which acts like an RMA that we can actually send to the customer to ask them to, to return the products to us. And so this gives us the ability to schedule the date that it comes back. We can also use this to set up transportation, whether it's a parcel shipment or pick it up by a van. Another great place to be able to see your rental status is within the mobile. And in the mobile, you'll see there's an equipment menu, equipment rental menu that gives us the opportunity to process. We can actually do a, uh, a an actual pick to put the demo equipment on rent uh, to be able to accept the return, uh, including being able to process it by serial number. And when we want to get an overview, you'll be able to go into the rental calendar. The rental calendar gives us the ability to search by item or by item group where we can see multiple products together. Here when we display, we can choose whether or not we want to see on a weekly, daily, or monthly basis. And we're able to see both the quantity that's available and we're able to see both the quantity that's available in stock ready to be given as a rental as well as the quantity of items that are coming back and expected to come back in that day. Here you can see the detail where we can see all of the transactions, we can see all of the items that need to be returned and get a running total over the course of the different dates.